you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit thank you spirit of truth thank you spirit of holiness thank you spirit of truth thank you the Holy Spirit of the living God we worship you we adore you we acknowledge you you are the Lord over your church for Christ is the head of his church and the spirit of Christ dwells in us he works in us he works in us our father what a joy to worship you to be in your presence what a privilege to be called the sons of God what a privilege to be called the people of God father we exalt you we honor you and we thank you for you are a good God you are a faithful God thank you Lord and thank you Lord and thank you Lord father as we move forward in the service into the word spirit of God help us with the understanding of the word reveal the word to us and cause the word to enter into us help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only for the hearers of the word deceives themselves deluding themselves but the doers of the word builds upon the rock spirit of god may we be doers of the word and may the word of god have dominion in our midst we pray that the word of the Lord will run swiftly and be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We unleash the power in the word of God to bring forth change today. Wherever you are listening, wherever you are connected to this service, I release the word of God to minister to you. I release the word of God to bless you. I release the word of God to transform you. This service will not leave you the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the spirit of God will surely minister to you wherever you are. And that the name of the Lord will be glorified. Lift up your hand and say thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. For today I am the one. The word will change. I am the one that will receive the word of life. Shout hallelujah. And so shall it be. And so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, take your seats and everybody else, both the ushers should come in and take their seats. Praise the Lord. So you should leave all the entrances open now. Leave it open now. Amen. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. Our God is a good God. <clears throat> I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you into the presence of the Lord, wherever you are, whether in the micro churches or in Eden or in your home or watching online from wherever you are. A very special welcome to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And like we have prayed, the word of the Lord is going to do wonders in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today, I am going to talk about something that many of us are not familiar with. 
but it's very important in our work with God. It's titled Spiritual Gifts. Amen. A, a lot of us don't understand even what spiritual gifts are. We don't even, we know the gift of the Spirit because we have been told what they are. Amen. But the understanding about not the fruits, but the gifts of the Spirit is something that many people have not even paid attention to. Praise the Lord. They have not paid attention to. You know why? Because they have not been taught. And once you are not taught about something, you will never know it. You can never relate with God by assumption. Praise the Lord. Now, important that you come and sit here. Now, did you hear what I said? This is a problem with distraction. He didn't hear when I called him and he's in church. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. When the word of God comes, or is coming, that is the main reason why you are in church. Whatever you do in church and you miss the word, you've missed everything. Are you hearing me? And thank God we are talking about the gift of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Because many people are born in Christ by the gift of the Spirit. They, were, they become Christian by the gift of the Spirit. Maybe they got born again in a crusade, in a miracle, or manifestation of power of God. And so they became Christian by the gift. And unfortunately, Many of them continue to live by that gift, meaning that they seek after the gift of God. They seek after where they can prophesy for them, where somebody can lay hand on them, where somebody can tell them about their future, and they go about their Christian life seeking that and sometimes even you even have more matured christians more matured christians living just on the gift they want a man of god that can prophesy for them a man of god that will see vision for them a man of god that will tell them who they should marry and such things praise the lord some wants to know if they will be rich or not some wants to know if they will make it or not. And so they go about. And so when you try to bring them, when you try to bring them into the real purpose and plan of God, they don't like it. When you try to bring them, this is what God wants. When you bring them to the word of God, when you try to share the word of God with them, they don't, they don't like it. They don't understand it. Praise the Lord. They will rebel. And in their rebellion, they will miss the word, they will miss God, they will miss their destiny, they will also miss their assignment in God. Because if you are not trained, you will never reign in the kingdom of God. Neither will the Lord assign you without a training. Are you hearing me? And the training of a believer is not just in coming to church. You see, you know what this is? You know what it is? What is it? What is it? This is the word of God, right? So this is the written word, right? Now, the written word takes you to the living Lord. And the living Lord takes you to the living God. 
Do you understand the way it works? The written word takes you to the living God. To the, sorry, the living word. And the living word takes you to the living God. There is no other way. Jesus said, no man comes unto the Father except by me. Amen? And no matter what your experience is, no matter what your experience is, if you don't have an encounter in the world, you will live a miserable life. It doesn't matter who lay hands on you. It doesn't matter who pour an oil on you. It doesn't matter the encounter you have in programs and, uh, and, and you know, wherever you are invited. It is still the word of God that transforms the life of a believer. And unfortunately, the devil has done a good job to keep believers away from the word. They go after the anointing. They desire the anointing. But Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he said something. He said, now concerning spiritual gifts, he said, I don't want you to be ignorant. He was writing to a church. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Can you open it and read for yourself? Verse 1. Amen. Paul, talking to the church, he says, Concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Meaning that just calling them brethren tells you that they are the church of God, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. When we say we are brethren, it means that we are body of believers. It means that we are together in Christ. It means that we are one. And so Paul says, I do not want you to be ignorant concerning spiritual things. Why? Because many people are ignorant about spiritual things. They don't get it. Amen. And so they live their life on encounters only. And so they are not rooted. What does that do for the kingdom of God? You are still the same person. A reduction of sin does not mean righteousness. Are you hearing me? That you used to drink 20 bottles of beer and you got born again and you only drink five. You say, shake my hand now, at least I've made progress. No, th does that sound normal to you? A man was arguing with, the, with the, the wife. The wife was saying, your girlfriends keep calling me and keep calling your phone and you shouldn't ha be having them. And he told the girlfriend, you should be happy. They have reduced. At least now it's only one or two. And he's a Christian. And he's a Christian. When we don't understand the word of God, Remember Jesus and the woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years, she has had the experience. Or Jesus with the man at the pool of Bethesda that was 38 years invalid. Or Jesus with the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, they wanted to stone to death, but Jesus rescued her. I can go on and on. Remember blind Bartimaeus. Remember all these people. When Jesus was arrested, did any of them show up? How many did Jesus heal showed up at his trial? How many that Jesus ministered to, healed, fed? He fed 5,000, he fed 4,000. How many of them showed up at the time of persecution of Jesus? Not one, remember? But remember a man called Nicodemus in, sorry, in John chapter 3, remember? He came to Jesus by night, remember? And he inquired about spiritual things. And Jesus taught him about spiritual things. And he understood what Jesus taught him. He was a leader of the Pharisees. He went back and taught on what Jesus spoke to him. Listen, listen. Education, especially spiritual education, is important in relationship. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, and I want us to open to this, John chapter 19. Come on, John chapter 19. Let us look at
John chapter 19. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So, Jesus did so many wonders in the lives of people. Amen. But, they didn't remember. And Jesus taught somebody called Nicodemus. Are we there? Let's read from verse 39. This is after Jesus has been crucified. This is after Jesus died. Jesus now was dead. Amen? None of these people that received the miracle showed up. None of them. None of them that Jesus healed showed up. But the Bible says in verse 19, Are you there? And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of mia and aloes about a hundred pounds verse 14 then they took the body of jesus and bound it in strips of nylon sorry in strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the jews is to bury amen who brought them no who brought them where was the mary's where was blind Bartimaeus? Why? Nobody showed up. Christian faith based on miracles does not change any life. Are you hearing me? Even though that's what many of you are looking for. Even though that's many of you want. And I said to her, where are the people in Munich that saw the wonders? Where are they? What change has taken place in their lives? Where are the people that Jesus taught that did all the miracles and wonders? Where are they? You can't live your life on assumption with God. Praise the Lord. Paul said, I do not want you to be ignorant about spiritual things. Remember John the Baptist? He came as a witness for the light because he was not the light. But he came as a witness for the light, isn't it? And John the Baptist focused on his ministry and he lived in the wilderness or in the desert. And he was faithful in his ministry. Faithful. The Bible recorded that John the Baptist did no miracle. He did no miracle. But all the things he said was true. Amen? And what was it that got John into trouble? John left his calling as a witness for the light and went into politics. Although you don't know. He went and told Herod, said, it's not lawful for you to take your brother's wife. Herodias hated him for it. And which was, he, he didn't die because he was preaching the gospel. No. No. Spiritual things, you need to understand the way it functions. Are you hearing me? You need to understand the way it works. Paul says, I do not want you to be ignorant. I do not want you to be what? Ignorance. About what? Spiritual gifts. Why? It will build your life superficially. It will build your life on the surface. If you read the entire chapter of First Corinthians chapter 12, Paul went on to explain about the diversities of gifts, the different types of gifts. He went on to explain it. Amen? I want us to read from verse 4. 1 Corinthians 12. He says there are diversities of gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Amen. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Hallelujah. We don't have different 
spirit giving different gifts in the body of Christ. It is one spirit that gives all the gifts. He says there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Amen. So we have different types of ministries. And that is why you must not judge any. You must not condemn any. The Bible says, the Bible says, and what? There are different words. Come on. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Verse 5. There are differences of ministry, but the same. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. In the ministry, in the kingdom of God, we have diversities of gifts, we have diversities of ministries, we have diversities of activities. What you do is that whatever God has called you to do, stay on that. Are you hearing me? Stay on what God... I, told, I just told you, I said, John the Baptist stepped into politics. He was not called to be a politician. He was not called to be a politician. And he paid dearly for it. He says, but the, manifestation, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So whatever gift of the Spirit that you have, it is for the profiting of the kingdom of God or the body of Christ. Amen. No one gift is exclusively given to one ministry. We are meant to work with one another. Praise the Lord. So, there are prophets. There are evangelists. There are apostles. There are teachers of the word. These people, they work in the diversities of these gifts. And then later, you see where Paul was describing the different types of gifts of the spirit. But there's something I want you to pick out. Praise the Lord. He says in verse 9, Sorry, let's read from verse 8. He said, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, isn't it? To another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. Praise the Lord. To another faith by the same Spirit, isn't it? To another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, isn't it? To another the working of miracles. Praise the Lord. To another prophecy. To another designing of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Is that all in your Bible? So the kingdom of God is loaded with gifts. The kingdom of God is loaded. But I want you to carefully follow what is in verse 11. Everybody read verse 11. Again, read verse 11, everybody. But one and the same spirit works all these things. Only the Holy Ghost works these things. Not as the pastor wants. Not as the members wants. But one and the same spirit works what? All these things. Distributing to each one individually as who wills. As who wills. As the Holy Spirit wills. He is the distributor. He gives as he wills. Are you hearing me? Check your Bible. Check your Bible. It is the Spirit that gives to any man and to every man as he wills, not as you will. Not as you will. But, but you can attract the gift of the Spirit. You can, you know, you know, money, money is attracted to a safe heaven. Money is attracted to a profitable business. Are you hearing me? Money is attracted to wonderful ideas. Money. Because money is a spirit also. So, money is attracted to things that multiply it. And you need to understand that the, the Holy Spirit is the best investor when it comes to his resources. He gives where he gets maximum return. 
Praise the Lord. The Spirit gives where he does what? Maximum return. He doesn't give the gift for those that want to stay at home with it. Or to those that want to show off with it. And so he gives as he wills to every man. And that giving is for the profiting of all. And they all there talking about the body of Christ. And so everyone, every believer, you know, you know. Uh, let's let's read verse ten. Sorry. I want us to jump. Let's read verse 27. Verse 27. Are we there? He said, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Christ is the head of his church and we are the members of the church. And so, as Christ is the head, we are Christ on earth. We are Christ on earth because the church is the body of Christ. And so, the gift of the Spirit can only function in the body of Christ. And so, when you see some unusual manifestation of signs and wonders, and you don't see the, 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 the working of the Word of God and the Spirit of God in that environment, it tells you that this cannot be of God. It's not every signs and wonder that is from God. It's not every signs and wonders. The devil is a manufacturer of signs and wonders. Lying signs and wonders. And unfortunately, those that should know better don't even judge. Pastor Chris said something to us in one conference. Listen, and when I share this, I'm sharing it because it's a truth that he said, and I believe it. We were having a conference in Benin. And then Pastor Chris said something. He said, he said, as long as you are in this city, and you live with the spirit in this city. He said, you will never make it in life. He is not cursing the place. After all, he himself, he has lived in that city. And the parents still live in that city. Praise the Lord. He said, as long as you are in Benin. He said, even if you are not in Benin, but you have the spirit. Spirit of the people from Benin. He said, you will never make it in life. He said... Tell me, who has never been to Benin? He said, all the greatest men of God, they've been to Benin. He started naming. Ora Robert has been there. R. W. Shambach has been there. Daisy Osborne has been there. T. L. Osborne was actually the last time T. L. Osborne, we were there together. Name them, they've been there. Papa Copeland has been there. Dr. Casey Price, El Park has been there. The list go on. Even the archbishop himself was there. And so when you want to talk about the gospel, people from Benin, we have heard it before. We know this man of God. We know this man of God. And we have heard him preach. And we have seen him and all that. And so they, they have some form of godliness, but in the power thereof. Do you understand it? And that is what happens when you attend, jump around. You have seen it all. You have listened to Joyce Mayer. You have listened to Pastor Benny Heen. You have listened to Papa Hagen. You have heard them. But what has changed you? Praise the Lord. Friday, Friday night, there was a program in Dunamis. International Ministers Conference. And then my daughter spoke to me about it, you know, and all that. So she said she was going to follow the program all through. I said, good, enjoy it, you know. So we spoke. Later on, I just said to myself, okay, there's this program running. She has told me about it. At, now I'm sharing it. She doesn't know. It's only when I told. I watched the program, but she didn't know. Even when she was telling me about the program, I was still, yeah. I said, yeah. She was sharing with me what I heard. I said, yes. Yes. But I watched it. But she was sharing with me what was I said, yes. Yes. I did. She will only find out now that I watched that program. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Why didn't I tell her? Why didn't I tell her? Amen? But I will tell you what I told mommy yesterday. I told mommy, I said, I listened to Dr. Paul Nature. I said, I said, he said something that I like too much. By the way, you know the message he taught in that all night? Flame of fire. Shout hallelujah. That was what Dr. Pella nature. And if you go and listen to that service, more or less the scriptures we use here was the scripture that Dr. Paul and nature shared. Are you hearing me? Flame of fire. That was the message. But there was something, example he gave that, that that makes me not only about the teaching now, but about his lifestyle. Amen. He said something. And this is what I told mommy. He said, he said one day he was in the car and they were coming. He said he, he saw his, his driver wearing his shoe. He has given that shoe to him. So the way the driver was doing with the shoe, he told the driver, be careful with this shoe. I can take it back from you. You are, post, you are posing with it too much. Praise the Lord. And, and then he said, some people here, even in the congregation, are wearing, talking about the pastors, actually. He said, some of you are wearing my suit. He said, if you are wearing my suit, stand up. And some of the pastors wearing his suit stood up. Do you get it? Are you hearing me? They stood up. Then he said something again. He said, one day he came to church early, and he saw some good cars, about three of them parked in front of the church. So he was asking, who are the people visiting us so early with these good cars? And they are looking at him. And they said to him, that's the car of the cook. That's the car of the gardener, of the cleaner. They said, eh? They said, that's the car. Praise the Lord. But some people that keep listening to Dr. Paul and Eche, we never learn that. That's my point. They will never learn that. Shout hallelujah. I, I listened to that program and that was my first time of listening to him like, like that. But I learned his love walk in the message straight away. You get it? I learned his love walk in ministry just from that. And for that, I admire him a lot. For, just from that alone, I know he's the son of my father in the Lord. I know that. He's the son of Bishop Yedekwa. Shout hallelujah. So, not just the gift, but the walk. The walk of faith. There is the work of faith. There is the work of faith. There is W O R K of faith. There is the W A L K of faith. But you need to understand that whatever gift you receive, if it is not in practice, it will not affect your life. Paul began to explain the diversities of gifts and the different types of gifts. Amen. Verse 28, and God has appointed this in the church, first apostles, second prophet, third teachers, after that miracles, then gift of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues, verse 29, are all prophets, no, uh, sorry, are all apostles, no, are all prophets, no, are all teachers, no, are all workers of miracles, no, verse 30, do all have gifts of healings, no, do all speak with tongues, no, do all interpret, no, but verse 31, everybody read it together. But, earnestly, desire the best gift. I show you a more excellent way. I show you a more excellent way. The Spirit gives to every man as he wills. 
But Paul is saying that your hunger, your desire, can be a trigger to draw the spirit. Are you hearing me? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. When you hunger, when you thirst after righteousness, he said, you shall be filled. You shall be filled. So if you don't have a hunger, if you don't have a test, if you don't even have a desire, not only a desire, he says, but earnestly desire the best gifts. He said, but earnestly desire the best gift. And yet I show you a more excellent way. Many of you don't know what it means to desire the best gift. You don't know what it is. You don't even know what it is to have a strong desire for the things of the spirit. For instance, I talk about you coming to church on time. Even those that live in church sometimes come late to church. You know why? Listen, don't get some things mixed up in your life. You have heard pastors say it over and over and over again. Don't Come to church late. You dishonor God. But you know what? You hear it. It doesn't change you. Now I'm even talking about those that, because when you, listen, when you stay in church and you come to church, you come to church 9.25 for 9.30 service, you are late. You are very late. You are very late. It may not touch you. You may, your conscience may tell you that after all it's 9.30. Why is pastor being so fussy? Are you hearing me? And that is the problem when you just walk with the gift of the Spirit, when you walk about the miracles and all that, and yet you don't have the foundation of the Word. You don't have the foundation of the Word. No signs and wonders will change the life of a Christian except the Word of God. And then the Word of God, the Bible said in John chapter 8, and you shall know the truth. Amen. Knowing the truth is not enough to make you free. But you need to act on the truth. Are you hearing me? You need to act on the truth that you know. You need to walk in the truth that you know. You don't get it. The truth will not make you free. Knowing the truth will not make you free. Hallelujah. Knowing, just, I started again. The truth will not make you free. Listen, it will not make you free. Knowing the truth will not make you free. But acting on the truth is what will make you free. Let me give you an example. And I'm, I, I'll give you these two examples for you to understand what I'm talking about. Last three Sundays, somebody led praise and worship and the song he started with, I knew it was not the right song. So after that, I think I spoke to I spoke to Brother Bodunde about it. And then I also spoke to Elizabeth about it. I said, that song, you people should not sing it. And then he said, okay. Not yesterday, but your pastor today. I was in my office. They were doing rehearsal and I was listening. And then Elizabeth was to lead praise Sunday. And as she started, she started with exactly the same song I said they should not be singing. And I was in my office. And Bodunde was there. And I was asking myself, what is the problem? I told her she was there. I said, this song, you push, you not sing it again. And then on Saturday, she was supposed to start. She was supposed to rehearse. She started with the same song. 
And I'm asking myself, what is wrong with these people? Are you hearing me? I am telling you that knowing the truth does not make you free until you act on the truth. So I have to use a practical example for you to understand. I've said to them also that before Burden Day came, I was taking them, I was teaching them. And I said to them, don't sing vernacular songs except maybe once in a while. Is that not true? Have I not told all of you? Not to sing vernacular songs. It doesn't matter whether it's Aosa or Yoruba or Igbo song. I said, don't sing it. Don't sing it. I said so. They know so. They don't obey the instruction. Do they know it? Were they told? Did they know it? Did they act on it? And so you see, you see, the, look, look, the problem of Christian is not not knowing, is the weakness of obedience. Are you hearing me? Is the what? The weakness of obedience. So, I knew that Saturday when they sang that song, I know there will be trouble on Sunday. Because, you see, once your pastor said to you, don't do something, and you practice it, and you practice it, ah, ah, you don't get it. And on that Sunday morning, when she started to lead her now, she was leading on Sunday now. When she started, she started with Yoruba song. And as I was watching when she started, she just started. What happened to me as I listened to her would have happened to almost everybody that was listening to her. It doesn't matter how spiritual you think you are. The moment you are in disobedience, you are of grace. Are you hearing me? Paul said, I do not want you to be ignorant concerning spiritual things. You don't assume righteousness. You don't assume obedience. Do you know? Do you know? <clears throat> In John chapter 14, Jesus was telling the disciples, I will soon go. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house. He was telling to them. And he told them that he will soon go and they will prepare a place for us and all that. And then as he was talking, Thomas said to him, Thomas said to him, show us the father. No, he said, show us the way that you are going. And Jesus said to him, Tom, said, Jesus said to Thomas, but I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no one comes to the Father except by me. Jesus, thinking that he has solved one problem. And then Philip got up. Philip said, then show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. And Jesus said, ah, have I been with you for so long? And yet. No, no, no. John chapter 14. Shout Hallelujah. Verse 8. John chapter 14, verse 8, right? Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Verse 9. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? Are you hearing me? You see, when you look at the signs and the wonders, you will never understand the word of God. You will never learn of the word of God. Why is the word of God so important? Because prayer comes out of the word of God. Worship comes out of the word of God. 
Prophecy comes from the word of God. Evangelist comes out of the word. Everything you can think about, it comes out from the word of God. And yet, I said to you, the written word connects us to the living Lord. And the living Lord brings us to the living God. You can't break the process. You can't break the process. And Jesus said to Philip, have I been with you for so long? And yet you don't know me. Our relationship is spiritual. Philip asked a question that exposed him. Thomas asked a question that exposed him. Do you know that listening to somebody and you understand the person is what makes you to know the person? Listen, are you hearing what I'm saying? But I, I listened to one of them, Dr. Paul Eneche, from Friday night to Saturday morning. I listened to him teaching. And I picked enough things that I can use to help my life and make my life better. Only once. Only once. Only once. I listen to that person, I listen to that person, I listen to that person. I say, it's not what changes your life. What changes your life is that I heard this person and it entered into me and I became another man. Papa Higgins, uh, sorry, Bishop Oyedekwa, who is our father in the Lord, he's, he wrote something in his book about Papa Higgins. He said he was praying. The Lord told him, pattern your ministry after this man. He said he was praying. And then he said in 1986, he went to one of his programs. He didn't go as a bishop. He didn't go as a great man of God. He went just as a guest. He said he sat at the back. He said he was saying, Lord, what is in this man putting me? What makes this man who he is putting me? He said as he was there, the power of God came upon him. He said he began to shake and to weep. It's in his book. I'm telling you what Bishop Yedek was said. He says, from one corner in U.S., the man changed the world. From one corner in U.S., he changed the world. The man, I am not sure, I will check again, if he ever came to Africa, maybe to South Africa, maybe once. Maybe once. I have never read any history of him ever stepping into Europe. Or Asia. Yes, he is gone now to be with the Lord. But every continent, he has an apostle or a disciple or a ministry connected to him. Shout hallelujah. It is not the truth that you know that sets you free, it is the truth that you act upon, that you walk upon. How many times will you be told to come to church early? How many times? And then you will still come when you think. The worship team leader is here. When I assigned him to take over from me, he took over. After the first week, I called him. I said, what do you think? He said, they are very disorganized. Is it not true? And that is very true of you all. I said, why? He said, when they're supposed to sit, you don't see them sitting. But before he took over, I had told them, when you come to church, be on your seat in the morning. Did I not teach you that? Did I not tell you what it means to be a worshiper? I said to them, before half an hour before service, be seated. If they had obeyed me, he wouldn't have that experience about them, including Elizabeth. Are you hearing? They know the truth, but they didn't act upon the truth. You know why? After service like today, go and check. Many of them may not listen to this message again today or this week. Are you hearing? Me that preach it will listen to it. 
over again. I will listen. About the faith comes by the hearing of the word. Amen. Faith comes. As you hear the word, that is the way the word builds up a change in you. You don't get it. And that is the way it works. That is the way it works. Very hardly have I heard any of them that I walk past by listening to the message. You can hear them listen to all kinds of things and all kinds of music and all that. Very hard do you see and hear me I'm talking about them consistently listening to the same word that has come from the pulpit over and over and over again. And you know why? They, they hear it. It does not enter into them. And so it doesn't take root in them. And so it doesn't bring forth in them. And so they don't walk in the newness of it. When we were talking yesterday, she said, every Sunday is the same song and the same song and the same song and the same song. Have I not told them the songs they should be singing? I told them. They said about data, there is data everywhere. It's not a problem of data. And that is the same thing that is affecting every believer. Jesus said, have you been with me for so long and yet you do not know me? No, who do you think that you are doing when you don't key into the word? Who do you think that you are doing? Young person, you're supposed to be on fire for God. You are busy. Busy for what? Do you know what busy means? Do you know what busy means when you say you are busy? Busy means being used systematically. Being used systematically. And so you are busy at work. You are busy doing your own thing. And then you are hardly busy for God. So they use you at work systematically. You use yourself for yourself systematically. But in the house of God, you are hardly used. You are hardly busy. Busy means being used systematically by everything else but God. When was the last time you were busy in the house of God? No. When was the last time? When was the last time you were busy in the house of God? Paul said, I do not want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. He said, earnestly desire. Earnestly desire. Earnestly desire. Has any of them grown in the area of worship? No, not one of them. Not one of them. You know why? You don't grow by just laying of hand. It can help, but the only way you grow is by you going into the word. Into the word. And consistently looking into the word of God. And then you are transformed by the word. That's the only way to grow. You don't grow by assumption. Some of you in Munich, you are so busy at work. You are busy at work. You are busy at work. You are never busy for the kingdom of God. You are never busy for the kingdom of God. You are working. And then you get a holiday. When you get a holiday, phew, you travel out. You have one month holidays. You travel out for one month. You come back, you go to work. And then they call you, you need evangelism. You say, no, I'm working. You know, I'm busy. I don't have time. I don't have time. Busy, being used systematically by who? No, by who? Who is using you? Who is using you? Who is making you busy? Mammon. Mammon occupies you so much so that God has no place in you. You are busy. You are busy. On holidays, you are busy. During work, you are busy. And so, they will, everybody will use you except the Lord. You are never busy for the Lord. When now the things of the Lord comes upon you, when the things of God comes upon you, you don't have time. You need to be quick. 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 Then you wonder, why is my life the way it is? No, why is my life the way it is?
Praise the Lord. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. The things of the spirit is not built on the surface. The things of the spirit is not built. The, the gospel is not a social media. Be careful. Praise the Lord. Jesus said to us in Luke chapter 10, he said, Behold, I give you power, verse 19, to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and then upon every power of the enemies. And he said, Nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is power. Say, That's power. Jesus said, I give you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and upon every power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And then, Jesus says something that shocks even the disciples. He said to them, do not rejoice. Do not be happy that the demons obeyed you when you cast them out. He said, don't, don't let that excite you. And meanwhile, these are the things that excite us. He said, be happy that your names are written in heaven. Shout hallelujah. He said, this is what should give you joy. That your name, if it's your name in heaven. No, it's your name in heaven. It's your name. Have you pleased the Lord to the point where you can say, I know that if Jesus comes today, I will make heaven. You say to yourself, Heaven has become a reality for me. He says, I will make heaven. If Jesus will show up today, I will make heaven. I have fought a good fight of faith. Paul said to them, In First Corinthians, thirteen, after verse thirty-one in First Corinthians twelve, he said, "But earnestly desire the best gift, and yet I show you a more excellent way." Praise the Lord. First uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse one, it says, "Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become what sounding brass." Or a what? A clanging symbol. Is that in your Bible? Paul says, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love, he said, I am nothing. Praise the Lord. That's what Paul says. He says, I have nothing. I am nothing. All the things I can do by faith, the mountain I can move by faith, he said, if I do all these things and I have not love, but he says, I will show you a more excellent way. So Paul is showing that there is something better than all the gifts enumerated in, verse two, in, in chapter 12. He says in verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 13, and now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but what? The greatest of this is what? The greatest of this is love. Praise the Lord. Go to chapter 14 verse 1. What does he say? Verse 1. Follow the way of love, right? But he says here, pursue love. That's what Paul says. He says, I will show you something better than the gift. Paul is saying there are levels in gift. He says, pursue love and desire spiritual gift. He says, pursue love. And what? Desire spiritual when it comes to love, he said, go all out for it. Go all out for it. Because this is the, what God is. And Paul said to them, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning spiritual things. I want you to know what is the important thing when it comes to spiritual things. He said, pursue love. He said, pursue love. 
and then desire also spiritual gifts. Is that in your Bible? Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may what? No, that you what? Come on, read it. What does it say? So, when you have pursued love and captured love, what is the next thing you should go for? That you should do what? Come on, prophesy, isn't it? What is prophesying? Some of you will think that it means a prophet. Mm, 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 I see tomorrow. Mm, 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 I see arrow coming to. It's not what he's talking about. It's not what he's talking about. That you may prophesy. What is he talking about? He's talking about what I'm doing now. Proclamation of the word. That you will be able to prophesy, declare the word of God. No, are you hearing me? He says in verse 2, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks what? Mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks what? Edification and exhortation and comfort to men. And that's what we're doing now. It's not about God says the Lord. No. Read your Bible. This is the reason why Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning spiritual things. Paul said, don't be illiterate. Understand what is important in the kingdom of God. Back in Jewel chapter 2 verse 28, and the Lord said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall do what? Prophesize. He says, You are sons and daughters shall do what? Prophesy. He's not talking about they will all become prophets. God says the Lord. No, he's saying that the word of God will become uh, illuminated to them. They will get to know the word because knowing the word and acting on the word is what makes you free. And that's what Jesus, if only you will get it. Knowing. Some of the things I just told worship them, they know it. I told them. I taught them. Not once, not twice. Why they don't do it? Not doing it has not changed them. But they know it. They know it. But why are they not doing it? It is because of the same attitude. You think you can get away with... Bishop Edekwa said, Bishop Edekwa said that shortcut is the most destructive way for you to follow in life. Amen? He said shortcut is the most destructive way you can follow in life. Follow the way that is laid out for you to do things as a Christian. Sit down with the word. Study the word of God. You can't be a good worshiper until the word enters you. You can't pray well until the word enters you. That is why many of you, you can't still not pray. Even you don't know. You, don't, you can't pray the way we pray in this moment because you don't listen to the message. The message is not in you. So you cannot pray the way we do. And so when you are called to pray, you pray what you heard online. I bind every power. Let them die. Pray that they die. Who taught you that? In this place? All my enemies, let them fire, let fire. Who taught you that? In this place? No. No. Until you sit down and eat what comes from your father's table, you will never have the spirit of your father. Only by eating what comes from his spirit that you can have it. That's the way it is. How close you are doesn't matter. We know no man after the flesh. That's what Paul says. We know people after the spirit. We have many singers in this place. There's only one worshiper. One person that is even, even now, he's slacking. I'm telling you. 
We have many singers. They are here. You can never become anything in the house of God if the word of God does not produce it in you. No, do you get what I said? Paul says, earnestly desire. Whatever you want to be for God, earnestly desire it. When you wanted to go to school, when you wanted to be educated, you went to school no matter the distance. When you were looking for that job, I told you last Sunday, people get up from 5 a.m. and then they resume work 8 a.m. in Lakey and then they close 6 p.m. and they get back home 10, 11 p.m. They spend 10 hours or 8 hours on the road because of the salary. And then on Sunday, they are just tired. They are just tired because they've been used systematically throughout the week. And here they are. On the day of the Lord, they are weak and they are tired. And so, they say they want to rest. And so, they rest without refresh. Praise the Lord. I may not tell you what you want to hear, but I will tell you what will deliver you from destructions. Praise the Lord. Politicians tell you what you want to hear, and now they're already telling you. And so you are looking at who tells you the most thing you want to hear, but now you are getting not to trust any of them. Praise the Lord. But why don't you trust God? Why don't you trust God? Why don't you trust God? Why don't you believe God? No, why don't you? You believe politicians. Why don't you believe your pastor? The word of politicians are useless. They themselves know it. They will even be surprised that you believe what they say. Politicians are shocked that you even believe that they will, they will say they will let condition and that you believe them. Praise the Lord. And somebody said to you, in four years, vote me in. There will be power, uninterrupted power for four years. In, just, in four years, you will have power, 24 by 7. And you believe the person. No, and you believe the person. And you voted the person. And somebody said to you, if you vote me, I will destroy all the terrorists. Just try me. And you believe the person. And you believe the person. Who are, no, who is fooling who? Even the mass shock that you believe them. Didn't Buhari say that vote me, I will bring security and I will make Naira one to one dollar. I had him, not that they told me. That's what Buhari said. Buhari said, if you vote me in, I will bring security and I will make Naira to dollar one to one. He is going out next year. What is the dollar to the uh, dollar? Dollar to the Naira. What is it? Have you removed him? If pastor should tell such lie, you will stop coming to the church. And so, you will believe politicians and give them more benefit of doubt than the word of God. That's the problem. Many of you, you are, you are ready to fight for the politicians. You are ready to fight for them. Risk your life. We not go agree. We not go agree. We not go agree. It must be. They ask you now, are you obedient? Or are you articulated? Or are you batified? Nigerians are funny with language. Praise the Lord. Are you obedient? Are you for obi? Are you articulated? Are you for article? Are you for, are you batified for Tinibu? How did they come up such things? No, how do you, how do you come such things? And then suppose that we are obedient. We are obedient. And God has been trying to tell you to obey him since you were God born again. You have never obeyed God. And now you say you are obedient.
and I will look at pastors even take a position. We need to be careful. We are not called into politics. We are called to be ministers of the gospel. Let's stay with what we know. Amen. We can never beat politicians in talking. No. The grace that is upon us for preaching is not upon, upon us for politics. They have their own grace. Are you hearing me? A man will come out and tell a lie and defend it. And you'll be wondering, why does he live at home? Say, thank you, Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Rest upon your feet. He says, prophesy. I want to finish reading that scripture. But, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Verse 4. He who speaks in tongue, in a tongue, edifies himself. But he who prophesies edifies the church. Are you hearing now? When you key into the word of God, when you understand the word of God, you are a blessing to the church. He says in verse 5. I wish you all spoke with tongues. But even more that you prophesied, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues. Is that in your Bible? No, read it again. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesied is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So there is a level. Prophesying. And speaking in tongues. Paul said he that prophesies is greater. Is greater than he that speaks in tongues. And he says those that walk in love, they are greater than those that walk in the gift. Word of knowledge. Are you hearing me? Word of wisdom. Gift of healing. Gift of faith. Gift of signs and wonders. Paul says that those that walk in love, are more excellent than those that work in the gift. Because the gift will not change you, but the word of God will change you. Shout hallelujah. Why is it that you have not been able to change the way you talk? They have laid hand on you. They have oiled you. They have communed on you. They have given you mantle. They have mantled you. The only thing they have not done is to give you as a bond sacrifice. You said, the way I'm talking, I'm working on it. What are you working on? What if Jesus comes tomorrow and he takes you to hell? You know why? Until the word comes to you in it, it will not change. No, you are arrogant and you know it. You are proud, you know it. You have tried to change it, you have not been able to change it. You have taken communion, taken anointing oil. In fact, you have drunk so much oil now, your stomach is shining. And yet it has not changed you. You know why? Until when we, the way we make a change in the kingdom of God is that when you sit down, you take the word of God. What did the Bible say about anger? What did the Bible say about pride? What did the Bible say about uh, uh, um, um, jealousy, adultery, fornication, arm robbery? What does the word of God say about? He said people that do such things will go to hell. He said, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. Lord, I want to be changed. I want to be transformed. That is what changes a person. Oh, you don't know it. Do you know how many women that have lost their marriage because of the way they spoke to their husband? The husband said, keep quiet. I said, I will not keep quiet. I will not keep quiet. The man said, keep quiet. He said, what will you do? You watch Nollywood where somebody said like that and got away with it because it's a film. And you, you are doing, and then, you are talking, the husband carry your load. <laughs> ah! You are taking my load. <laughs> you can't remove my load. Though. You went and brought it. The man slapped you. You realize that the game has changed. What happened? You broke your home. You broke your home. Keep quiet. Don't tell me to keep quiet. The man said, I will show you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
and we were teaching you in church, learn to be quiet, learn to be obedient, learn to be submissive, and you didn't hear. And then eventually, it destroyed your marriage. And you say, Pastor, pray. Which pastor? Me. Pray for what? No, what should I pray? No. What should I pray? That your husband should take you back. Huh? Take you back? What if I call your husband? Your husband says, Pastor, you want me to die by taking her back? Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You need to understand the way spiritual things work. They are very important. You need to know how it works. Are you hearing me? You need to know how it works. Spiritual things are not a joke. They are not a joke. You, you, you key into the spirit to get a change. And only the word of God takes you through the process of change. How can you listen to a message like this then all week you are dancing, you are not keen into the word, you are not working with the word, you are not looking into your life with the word. You know, that is where the struggle is. The struggle is not that you don't know it. The struggle is that you don't have the grace to live it. My prayer is that from today, all of you will change. Especially those of you in the worship team. A singer is not a worshiper. I've told you that before several years. I've taught you what a worshiper is. I taught you. Praise the Lord. The Spirit distributes to everyone as He wills. He said, But your desire can be a trigger for the Spirit to distribute to you. As a young Christian, I was longing. I said, Lord, I want to learn to be a teacher of the word and how to pray. I said, this is what I desire. That was what I desired because that was what I wanted. I said, Lord, I want to be a teacher of the word. And I want to also know how to be able to pray the word. You know what? I didn't just desire it. I invested in it. And the Lord gave it to me. And the Lord gave it to me. It was what I asked. I didn't, I didn't ask him. I didn't ask the Lord to be able to heal the sick. I didn't ask the Lord to be able to prophesy. I didn't ask the Lord to be able to move mountain by faith. You know why? When the word settles in, all those things answers to the word. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everything answers to it. Papa Hagen said, when he is having a program, and then the anointing for healing comes. Papa Hagen said it. He said he will run as much as possible to touch everybody because the anointing is there. He said, but the anointing will lift suddenly. You can't ask God why. You can't ask God why. He said when the anointing lifts, he continues to heal people by the word of God, by faith. Did you hear what I said? When the anointing comes, anybody can get healed. Anybody can get healed. When the anointing comes, I've seen it happen even while I'm ministering. People get healed. Something happened and all that. But what about when there is no anointing? Are you hearing me? There is something that always works. And that thing is what? The word of God. Amen. When you want to go for interview for a job, how do you place an anointing in that? You run to a pastor. I know that some of you will drink anointing, use mantle, and then take communion. You are going for a job interview. But have you seen where do you use the word to create room for yourself? Are you hearing me? I was traveling one time. They said the flight is completely full. I cannot travel. And I was supposed to have an all night or something like that, a program in Munich. I said, I must be on that flight. The manager of KLM told me, he said, Pastor, this time I can't, I can't guarantee. I don't think you can make it in that flight. But you can still come, but I'm not sure you'll make it. As I was going, I said, Lord, somebody has to be removed from that flight for me. I said, Lord, somebody has to be uprooted, maybe in a hold up. 
or, or in a traffic jam. Somebody must be stopped for my sake. For I have a gospel work to do. I have an assignment to attend to. I said, somebody must be stopped. And I was going, I was declaring it. As I got to the airport, the, the man said, Pastor, you need to wait. I told you before. I said, no, no, no. no. I said, no problem. I will make it. I said, he, said, he said, the flight is so full. You can see some people even we are overbooked. I said, I will make it. Are you hearing me? The flight was full with leftover, leftover passengers. And they were checking in people. Sorry, people have checked in and they were going to board. Somebody that has already checked in couldn't show up at the boarding gate. Are you hearing me? I didn't say he, he was already checked in. He had the boarding pass. But at the boarding gate to enter plane, we don't know what held him. I know. Shout hallelujah. He has to be detained somewhere for me to enter. And the manager called me and said, <laughs> Pastor, he checked in. We can't see him. I said, but you can see me. I said, you can see me. Take me. He said, okay. Okay. They took me. He, he said, going, going. I said, I'm going to go and sit. And they said, we have to remove the luggage of the man that's supposed to. I said, remove his luggage and put my own. That's a normal procedure. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is working the word. I was to have a meeting with somebody, a, a marketing director of an international company in Germany. He told me, five o'clock, pastor, if you are not there, I will leave. I was ministering. And I said, Lord, keep him on that seat. He will not be able to get up until I finish. He said, we have authority. I said, Lord, keep him on that seat. He can't get up until I finish. Took my time, finished my meeting. Entered the car, told my PA, let's go. We went there. Everywhere was closed. I pressed. He said, yeah, hold on, I'm coming. He came, he opened the door. He looked at me. He said, you know, I didn't know why I couldn't leave. I said, I know why. He said, you know why, why? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't go, don't, don't, I don't want you to talk about it. I don't want you to talk about it. But I know why. I stopped him from leaving. Shout Hallelujah. When you walk the word, the word will work for you. But when you are too busy for the word, you are exposing the world. Busy, being used systematically. Ask yourself, all the way you are busy, when was the last time you were busy for God? You know why some people say come late to church? It's not because they, hate, they like coming late. It's because they love the things of God, but they don't love God. No, did you hear what I said? They love the things of God. If you love God, you can't, come to, you can't keep coming to church late. Even your conscience, your spirit will, will rebel against you. Why are you doing this? If you love God, but if you love the things of God, you can manage coming late all the time. It doesn't matter. If we say now, you don't need to give offering. We don't need to take offering. I said, if you want to give, give, go. How many of you will still give up offering in this church? If we say now, okay, today, if you want to give, you give. If you don't want to give, just go. How many of you will still give? That's the thing. Praise the Lord. Because many of you don't pay tight because you don't think that you don't, you say you love the things of God so you can pay tight. But if you love God you will pay tight and give to support his kingdom. That's the difference. Lift up your hand. Say thank you Jesus. Say thank you Lord. Father we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus mighty name. Give me the grace, Lord, to be a doer of the word from today in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, give me the grace to be a doer 
of the word. Let my life be an attraction to others. Holy Spirit, teach me how to prophesy. Teach me how to understand the word. Teach me how to live the word. Let my life be transformed. In Jesus' mighty name, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please take your seats again. If today is your first time you are worshiping with us, whether online or in the micro church, you, you, you are invited, somebody called you, we got our message and all that, and today is your first time. Let me see your hand. If today is your first time worshiping with us, God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please reach out to them, those of you in the micro church. We welcome you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is God's family church, and it's our pleasure to have you. Please take your bag, take your Bible, take your notebook, whatever you came to church with, please. We have a space on my right side. Even those of you in the micro church, there is a place for you. Please help them, and one of our leaders will talk to you after we have shared the grace. Shout hallelujah. Clap for them. Come on. Clap for them. We are delighted that you are here and we want you to prayerfully consider, prayerfully consider God's family church as your church. We'll be more than delighted to have you and receive you in Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed and you are blessed and you are blessed. Shout hallelujah. Rise on your feet, everybody again, wherever you are. Amen. Remember what I said. How many of you will give if we don't take offering? How many of you will remember to give? Amen. All right. I want to pray for you. And after praying for you, we share the grace. And if you want to give to God, you drop it on the altar before you go. If you don't want to give, you go with it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everywhere. Nobody is taken back for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You develop love for God. Paul said, pursue love. Please. Please. Pursue the love of God. I want to encourage you Pursue the love of God. Amen. If you love God, you will give out of your heart. You don't need to be told. And nobody's going to carry back to you again. Amen. Amen. If you're ever thankful to God and grateful to God. Yeah, you can see the account details online for those of you that are online. So it's up to you. You know. But sometimes we might treat God in our actions. We might treat God. Somebody is begging you, come to the house of God early. But if you are going to American embassy or Schengen countries, if they say be there 5 a.m., you will be there 4 o'clock. You will be there for visa. No, think about it. And you will pay and they may refuse you visa and they will chop your money on top of it and there's nothing you can do and they will say try again and you still try again. And God has never done that to anybody. May you learn to love the Lord. All I'm telling you is that loving the Lord is the greatest gift. If you will ever love the Lord, to understand the word of God will become easy for you. Because remember, he says, he said, all these things are done by one spirit. When the Spirit sees the love of God for you, there's nothing the Spirit of God cannot do for you. Just as a, as a Christian, not as a pastor, I consider going to church late a sin. That is the way. 
Ask Marvin, we used to quarrel about going to church late those days because we had one car then. And then when we got a second car, hallelujah, it was deliverance for me. Oh, I was happy. I was liberated. Amen? If you love me, if you truly, truly love me, we're supposed to go to church together and then we get to church and you are there and you're saying, okay, honey, okay, honey, okay, honey, you know I love you, okay, honey. You don't love her. Because if you love her, you will make sure that your place in Christ is secure so that she and the children will not suffer. You can love her and they will suffer, but you can love God and they will never suffer. And then some husbands, they become so trained by their wife. They used to be on fire for God. They used to be on fire for God until they got married. I have a daughter in Germany. She used to come to church from Frankfurt. Those days, she would make it to church on time. That's a journey of over three hours. She would make it. She was doing it consistently. Three hours plus to come, or four hours, and three, four hours to go back. Every Sunday, she was doing it. Wow! She was doing it. She would come by train. She would pay her way. And then she would come four hours. She would go back four hours. And then she was on time in Munich more than those that were in Munich. Until she got married. Until she got married. Then she didn't have a car. Now she has a car. But she cannot do any of those things again. No, I'm telling you. My former secretary, she knows. We used to drive one hour to church, Sundays, Wednesday, and all that. And now they bought a house. They bought a house about one hour from Munich. You know, when they bought the house, it was good news to everybody. But I knew the problem. Even when they bought it, there was issues. And I said, I spoke to the husband. I said, how will you put manage with church? He said, oh, daddy, don't worry. We'll buy a bus. Why, should, why he was saying all those things? I never believed any of them. And it never worked one day. And now, the PA was there when the church started. She was there when the church was established. She was there when the church was registered. She was there when everything happened. Now, she doesn't come to church again. Marriage. Marriage. No. Are you hearing me? Marriage. And there are some of you, that you are single. You are struggling to serve God. I wonder what will happen when you get married. You tell me, Pastor, you know, we just got married. We need to bond together. Bond together. You will be adhesive together. Praise the Lord. What you are not as a single, you will never become when you marry. As a matter of fact, the fire in you, you will struggle to keep when you get married. Talk less when you have no fire. No, I can go on and on and on and on. Take heed to your life. Because it is the person's place in his God that changes his family. I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. I bless you that this week will be a wonderful week for you. That the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon your life. That the mercies of the Lord shall rest upon you. I bless you with peace. I bless your expectations. I bless your earnest desires. May it be for the Lord. May your earnest desire be for the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. You are blessed. And you are blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it be well to you, to your family, to your generation. May it be well. May it be well. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' precious name. Shout hallelujah. Let us share the grace globally. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Surely 
God's goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our lives. 